So the whole numbers project, this project will demonstrate your ability to add, subtract, multiply, and divide whole numbers. Here's our instructions. Solve each problem. Oh, that's some deep instructions. We can do that. Show your work in a neat and orderly manner on a separate pe uh, sheet of paper. Then write your answers in the spaces provided below. Attach your worksheet to this page. I mean, we're just going to be doing it on slides, so it's not too bad. But Michelle is planning a major yard renovation. She wants to reseed her entire yard, both back and front lawn, and fence the two sides and back of her, of her yard. Below is an overhead view of her house and yard. Using the picture scale from Google Maps, the estimated dimensions of her yard and house are given in the sketch. Okay. Hmm. Uh, this is kind of weird. Like, I really hope this isn't actually someone's house. Certainly not someone in the class, but um, uh, I assume this is someone's house somewhere. Maybe, uh, hopefully it was done randomly. Maybe it's, I don't know. In any case, this isn't supposed to be as creepy as you may think, just <laughs> right off the bat here. But uh, we're looking at this diagram, really. Okay, So we, we see this picture from Google Maps, and uh, we've kind of uh, restructured it so that it's, I don't know, a little bit more clear, especially with the measurements, right? Now, what we see... And this, that right, the green would constitute the yard. The white here is the house part of the property. Oh, good. That's uh, that's good. It's not my house, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, and the orange right here, this this is going to represent the that's going to represent the fencing around the backyard. It looks like. So, um, what we're going to do is we we got to kind of start implementing some of the strategies we learned in this unit particularly with uh, with the composite shapes right like like if you look at the house here this is a composite shape right you'd say this is uh, 50 30 20 40 30 and 70 it's just that they've given us all the lengths of the sides of that uh, of that house which I think is going to make solving for that area very convenient for us right we don't actually have to solve for any missing values other than the area which we do need okay and uh, that's going to be part of the lawn so um, Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. So looking at this lawn, and uh, what, I, what I want to do to find the area of this lawn, okay, is I want to look at the full property. So that's this big rectangle I put in black here. And they did give us both dimensions of that, right? It's a 140 by 80 foot rectangle. So to find that area of just the full property and, and again this is important to know that it's the full property what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those two dimensions and multiply them length 140 times width 80 and this will tell me the size of this property in square feet so I uh, yeah we can do the multiplication here uh, zero times zero 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 well zero times anything is zero so we get three zeros there that was easy but uh, the eight and the tens place value so no ones but eight times zero zero eight times four is thirty two carry the three eight times one is eight and then add the three makes that eleven so that's eleven thousand two hundred square feet. But remember, this, this also includes the house in it. This first question is really asking for just the square footage of the yard. So what I'm going to need to do then is to find the actual area of this house. And since they gave us all the dimensions of the house, it's, it's not really going to matter which way we cut it. So um, I don't know. I'm just kind of in a horizontal mood, I guess, today. But I'm going to cut this horizontally. So I see this is a 30 by 50 square foot rectangle and uh, finding that area here this is 50 times 30 really what I'm making this is 5 times 3 which is 15 and I'm going to tack on the two zeros okay but I do need the second rectangle this one and I can see this is a 30 by 40 rectangle so yeah let's find this area um, 30 times 40 uh, really, 3 times 4, which is 12, and then tack on those two zeros. So the total area of the house, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to put that down here. The area, the house area, I'll, I'll do that. The house area is going to be the 1,500 from the purple rectangle. 
and I'm going to add that to the red rectangle 1200 and whatever I get out of this will be the area of the house so that's a 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 5 plus 2 is 7 1 plus 1 is 2 so that's uh, 2,700 square feet of house, okay? Uh, but remember, this has to come off of the yard area. I should say the property area, right? So we just found the property area, 11,200 square feet. I need to subtract the house, which will then tell me the square footage of the yard. So let's take off this uh, 2,700 here. And again, the nice thing about this is it will tell me the square footage of the yard. So 0 minus 0, 0. 0 minus 0, 0 still. 2 minus 7, I need to borrow the 1 there. Uh, so 12 minus 7 is 5. 10 minus 2 then is 8. So it's 8,500 square feet of yard. And I suppose it would have been more appropriate to put that in green, but I didn't really coordinate my colors there very well, did I? 8,500 square feet of yard. So that solves the first one for us. Find the area of the yard. For the lawn, she has selected the grass seed shown. I don't see the picture, but um, as you can see, uh, it does give us the information, which is really what we need. It, it, uh, one bag. One bag will cover 1,200 square feet, and also each bag is 12 bucks. So what we need to do is figure out um, how many bags we'll need, right? And remember, each bag will cover 1,200 square feet. So what I'm going to do to figure this one out is just take the total area of the lawn, 8,500 square feet, and if I divide it by how many square feet one bag will cover, which is the 1,200 square feet, that'll tell me how many bags we're going to need. Now, we may get a remainder on this one, which is important to notice and interpret in our answer, okay? So number two, how many bags of grass seed does Michelle need? Well, like I said, we're going to take the 8,500. And we're going to divide this by, um, what was it? Yeah, that's uh, 1,200 right there. 1,200. Now, we are using division on this, and uh, you don't really need to make, I don't know, multiplication tables of 12 on this. All I'm going to do in order to figure out, because it's telling us how many bags, is I'm going to say, look, we got zeros that match with the divisor here and the dividend. So I can get rid of those zeros, actually, right? This zero cancels out this one right here. And then this zero will cancel out this one, okay? So really, I, I'm only needing to look at 12, I'm sorry, 85 divided by 12, okay? So uh, multiplications of 12, at 12 will go into 85. Hmm, seven times. Because seven times 12 is 84. Okay, now when I subtract, I do get a remainder on this one, which is okay. That's okay to have a remainder on this. But it also, again, we need to interpret the this in, this uh, answer, this quotient, in context. How many bags of grass seed does Michelle need? Well, here's the problem, right? If she gets just the seven bags, and we're assuming that you can't purchase partial bags. That complicates things much further than we want or need in this case. But if she only purchases seven bags, the problem is she's going to have a little bit of a corner or like a patch somewhere that it's not going to get the grass seed. And I assume that's not what she wants. So uh, in, a, in actuality, in order to cover the entire lawn, she's going to need eight bags. And will she have some left over? Yes, she will. Uh, you know, assuming that she applies it as the bag uh, is meant to. But, you know, this also means that maybe she could increase a little bit uh, of the seed in certain areas, I suppose. Okay, but again, we're going to say that she needs to purchase eight bags, not seven. Seven is too little. So what is the total cost with the grass seed needed? Well, she is purchasing eight bags. And we do know that it's going to be $12 per bag. So 12 times eight. 12 groups of 8, or 8 group, groups of 12, however you like it. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 8 times 1 is 8, but add the 1 that we carried over to make that 96. So it appears that it's going to cost, I think it was Michelle, 
96 bucks after she purchases eight bags. So yeah, there's those first three answers for us. And, and that's a really good question. So uh, the remainder being one isn't, isn't what I added to the seven. Uh, like if, if, if I got a remainder of um, 10, right, or, or nine or some, and any number remaining other than zero, I should say, if I got any other remainder than zero on this, I would have to add another bag because the remainder indicates that part of the lawn is not getting covered, right? Now, like if we if we went back, what what this is saying, right? Let, let, let's go back to what this really means, okay? So, if you had, uh, if each bag covers 12, 1,200 square feet and you purchase seven bags, okay? Now, I'm going to kind of speed up the multiplication on this. That means you're going to cover 8,400 square feet, okay, from seven bags. But the problem with, the, with this is that the yard is 8,500 square feet. So the seven bags is just not big enough to cover the full yard. And, you know, if she's okay with that, that's fine. But, again, that, that, that comes into uh, we're running into some hypotheticals that further complicate the problem. Um, in order to make this work, she's going to need to purchase another bag. Now, will she cover more, or, or could she cover more than just her yard? Yes, she could, um, but really we're not. And, yeah, some of you are like, well, there's the driveway right there. Okay, that's fine. We're going to assume that it's <laughs> made of yard, I guess. All right, here we, we still have the diagram of the house. We still need it. But now we're just focusing on the fencing for this last uh, parts right here. So for the fencing, Michelle has selected cedar pre-made panels that are each eight feet long. As you can see in the picture though, each panel costs uh, 57 bucks, right? In this picture right here. Uh, and yes, this is not like an endorsement for your local store or whatever. It's not like they're paying us to put this on here, but it's just a nice problem because you may have seen that. So find the perimeter of the sides and back of her yard. See the thicker lines on the sketch of, for, of her house. Okay, that's the orange right here, okay? So what we got to do is we got to figure out how much length of fence she needs. Now, you'll have to notice as well, she's not putting fence right on the back of her house. So uh, we're not actually finding this length right here. We got to, um, well, we got to figure out how much fence we need to cover here, but not, not on the back of the house, okay? So let's, let's zoom in. So here are some values that we know, all right? We know that this length is 60 feet right here. We also know that this length is 80 feet. And I got red right there, it's 80. And this, this length here at the top is also 60 feet, okay? It's another 60 feet right there. Now that's, that's a good start for us, but we got the, those two orange sections that uh, kind of fence in the back right here and here that we need to know, we do need to know that, okay? Now, I just want to know the total amount of fence. Again, you could say, well, we don't know how long those, those sections are, and that would further complicate the problem. That's not what we're trying to do. Uh, we're, we're saying that pretty much you could split these, these fence panels up at any point here or here or somewhere else, okay? So we've got to figure out that length. Well, here's what we know is if I, if I went the full length of the yard, this length right here, that's 80 right there, right? But notice... The house is going to take up 70 of those right there. So in order to figure out the two lengths combined, see if I can find a good, I'll put those in purple, this one and this one. If I combine them, all I would need to do is take the 80 feet length of the yard and subtract the house length, which is 70. And that will tell me how much fencing I would need on those edges, which is uh, just 10 feet. Okay. So what is the total amount of fencing that I, that uh, Michelle's going to need on this? Well, I'm going to start with the 80 feet length here on the side. And we're just going to add all these together, okay? I, I'm, I'm going to go clockwise, by the way. So I would say you got the 60 on the top. Oh, what the heck? I'll split it up. You got the 60 on the bottom. And then you have the 10 foot combined length of these two edges right here. So we're just going to add these together. And this will tell us how much fencing is needed. So in the ones place, zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Yeah, that's zero. And then up here at the top, I got uh, eight plus six there, is, uh, that's 14. 
uh, plus this 6 right here, that'd be 20. And then plus that 1 there is 21. Now, I did that kind of fast. I hope that I hope that's okay. If you got questions, just chime in. But that's, oh, I almost put that square foot right there. See that? It's, it's 210, but it's not square feet anymore because we're not looking at area. It's a perimeter, so it's just a straight length on this one. We just need 210 feet or foot of fence. I don't know. But, um, again, hopefully that would make sense. It's not square footage of fence that we're looking at. We just need fence. So you need a length. So uh, let's go back to the problem. I forget what the question was. Uh, for the fencing, uh, find the perimeter of the sides and back of a yard. That's what we just did. That's what that 210 is. So yeah, we just found that out. 210 feet of fence. How much fence panel, how many fence panels does Michelle need to purchase? Well, she needs 210 feet, and it said over here that they're eight feet long, okay? Now, again, you could say, look, I'm pretty committed to doing eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight until you get to 210, and that'd be fine, okay? But I'm going to take the shortcut on this one, and I'm going to say, look, it's 210 feet. All I'm going to do is divide this up amongst eight groups, okay, because it's eight feet each. So this will tell me how many fence panels that I need, right? Eight feet per panel, 210 feet divided by eight feet per panel will tell me how many panels there are. So eight won't go into two, but it will go into 21. That's like uh, twice because two times eight is 16. So subtract that out one, got to borrow the one. Uh, so 11 minus six there is five. 1 minus 1 is 0. I'll just leave that out and then drop this 0. That's doable. And then uh, 8 will go into 50. Hmm, 6 times. Uh, I got a remainder of 2. Now, the remainder of 2, again, this is crucial, just like we did with the bags. If you said, look, uh, uh, Michelle is going to purchase 26 uh, fence panels, right? Well, if we did that, let's, let's show what this, what happens on this, just like we did on that last one. 26 times 8. This will tell us how many feet of fence this will produce. So 6 times 8 is uh, 48, just like we saw with the division. It's just backwards. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 4 is 20. So this will cover 208 feet of fence. That means that you would have a 2-foot gap somewhere in there. That's what the remainder is telling us, by the way, right? Because she needed 210 feet, eight panels will only produce, I'm sorry, the 26 panels, rather. The 26 panels will only produce 208 feet of fence. So what is she going to need to do? Well, she's going to have to purchase the full panel again. Okay, so not only the 26, but we're going to add one to that and make it 27. So 27, I'm just going to put panels. You can put fence panels if you want. See if I can fit that on there. Uh, pan, panels. There we go. 